Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie, and I'm going to take you today on another adventure. I'm walking here in a typical little French town, and I'm on my way to a true dying capsule, a manor that has been left behind for quite some time. We have been trying to get inside of this place for a few times right now, but we think it's going to happen today because we heard it's, it's open and uh, it's possible to go in there. Let's go. Let's try this out. So, I'm already inside right now. Now it's the turn of them. As you can see, we are now on the property of the manoir itself. Completely overgrown and lost in So, the I'm now standing here in the backyard of the place. As you can see, everything is completely overgrown over time. This is the manor itself. Beautiful backside with the French shutters and everything. And over here to the side of it, they got some sort of a guest house. As you can see, there's even a toilet in here. But I'm gonna show this one in depth later. But first, let's head inside of the manor, because there's a window open here at the back where we can hop in. Let's go. Mr. George. Since his childhood, he was a big fanatic of architecture and design. Later on in his life, he made his dream come true and started his own factory that manufactured crown molding and pottery. Life was good for George. He had a prosperous factory, a loving wife and a beautiful daughter. But it all turned south for him. When his business started to become an obsession, he lost his interest in all other things, even his family. Life started to fall apart. His wife left him, she won custody of his daughter, and later on, the sales of the factory started to decline. Unfortunately, there is no happy ending to this story. George passed away at the age of 86 years old and there was nobody to take over his beloved factory and mansion. In this documentary, we will take you around his long forgotten home and reveal the history that's locked behind his doors. So that's the window we just climbed through and we come immediately into a time capsule like room. As you can see, there's a vault over there in the back. Embreville, dans la France. Wow, these are four keyholes that you need to fill to open this lock. This one is nothing to the side. I'm wondering what's inside of here. Some champagne boxes. And this wallpaper is also quite unique. <laughs> you can immediately see the spider webs covering this place. And this truly makes it a time capsule. I don't believe, I saw some pictures before from this place, but truly not a lot of people have been in here and have uh, seen this place in a long time. Oh, these look like painting canvases or something like that. Yeah, they have not been painted yet. Interesting. Beautiful little cabinet here to the side. And they also have like, oh, these have been painted. Wow. Oh, these were maybe the, these were maybe the designs for his pottery that he made. Yes. Look at this. We immediately find some artifacts, and that makes this uh, the story of the house 
completely true. You can see these are the pots that he made. And we're gonna probably see more of this throughout the place. Wow. You can see this old school telephone over here. And it has these switches down here, probably to connect internally to other people. And then over here you can dial externally. I'm gonna give you a little lesson how one of these phones used to work. So you would, uh, the number you want, for example, zero, you take zero, you go back to this little metal thing, you let it loose, and then you do all the numbers, pick up the horn, and then you could call. Probably most people who watch my channel know how a phone like this works, but uh, yeah, it's quite interesting nonetheless. Uh huh. He also got some wallpaper of pots behind here. This man was truly, truly interested and uh, intrigued by pottery and yeah he made his life from it he even abandoned his wife and children to pursue his passion of pottery okay we've just entered into the kitchen a very very basic french kitchen as you can see there's no appliances in here and i have checked before uh, but there is no other kitchen inside of the place I love these cabinets here to the side. Let me show them in detail to you. Let's open one up. Oh, and we are immediately greeted by beautiful pottery that he probably made himself inside of his factory. Wow. This man, Mr. George, had a passion in life. I adore people who have a passion in life, but you also got to respect the relationships you have and you don't let need to let it uh, take over your life a passion is great but it can also ruin your life some tiles down here they probably also made this in the factory spider webs are covering them show you a bit more of the kitchen. I think this was to wash clothes, this bin, uh, this, yeah, it was to wash clothes or something like this. I'm not 100% sure. And over here that would cook food, I believe. This looks like nothing to cook food on. This looks like just a sink. This is the only piece of kitchen they have left here. Maybe they took something out, but I'm not sure about that. We got one picture of Maria over here. I think it's Maria. No, it's Teresa. Saint Teresa. I forgot to show you these beautiful radiators here in the hallway. Let me see. Maison Rochemer. They were made in Troyes, and that's in France. It's a, town, a city in France. Beautiful city if you ever come to France. Make sure to video, visit Troyes as well. This was the back door. We have one more of those radiators here to the side. <sighs> this was the lantern inside of the hallway. Wow. Isn't that just fantastic? How people used to decorate their homes. This door over here leads to the basement. And this little hidden door that you see inside of this house, they have like these doors that are worked away into the wall. It's just a little place to hang and store your coats and stuff like that. This man, he used to store stuff from his company inside of his house. That's probably one of the reasons that his wife left him behind. This took over his life. This truly took over his life. We have French financial times from back in the day here. Wow, this looks like a really old one. Some tiles that I made in the company. Not a little lantern here to the side. Oh, and this is also a very cool, um, I don't know the exact word for this, but this device they would make for you, this is custom made, and with this device you could uh, measure the size of your shoes. 
So uh, the shoemaker would know your size. I don't know, this one you would put inside of a shoe, but you also have the ones that they, they make on the size of your shoe, uh, of your foot. Very cool. Let's put it back nicely. And then it's time to visit the master bedroom. Okay, let's go through this bedroom because I'm quite excited for it. It's, it's a magnificent bedroom. And first off, we have a piano inside of the bedroom. This is actually very something very uncommon that I've not seen a lot in France, probably nowhere in the world, that you would have a bedroom, uh, a piano inside of the bedroom. Some little statues on top of there. I'm gonna show you every little detail and quirk of this place. The lamp. Uh, that clock over here. At this day, probably stored some jewels inside. There's nothing in there anymore. Wow. Let's see if this masterpiece still plays. Wow. That's beautiful. Bernard Fields, as Mires, also made in France. He truly supported the French economy back in the day. And this piano chair is also a unique piece. Wow. And then look at this cabinet here to the side with all the design on it. Let's see what's in there. Cups. Why would he have cups inside of his bedroom? Did he have a tea party in here or something like that? Oh, pictures. I always love to see pictures. This is a picture of them together, the wife and the man, before they got divorced in 1985, as you can see. And this was him later on in life. Oh, that's crazy. Some pictures from Greece. And over here, we got old school French town depicted. More stuff in here. Oh. These were little stands where you could put some, a vase and a plant on top of there. Beautiful marble table. This is empty. And every room inside of the house used to be built with a fireplace. But I can see that they already had central heating inside of this house. There are radiators everywhere. But in big castles, you see it a lot that they built fireplaces inside of bedrooms because they had no central heating back in the day. And so they had to provide some heat in another way. Wow, this looks like a war picture or something like that. It's crazy. Place this back nicely, it was behind the mirror. Uh -huh. I see from the corner of my eye that in this building cabinet are more faces left behind. More pottery, pottery work of him. Wow. And the bed over here has no mattress on, on it anymore. So that's very strange to me. Why did they take the mattress out and leave everything else inside of this place? Little mirror on top. Yeah, to the side we got another one of those cabinets with the same style uh, style of cabinets as the other one that we saw. Wow. There's some sort of a little sketchbook here. Oh, with more sketches, of course, of French towns. Of course, pottery, that's his passion in life. So we got to have sketches of pottery, of course. Beautiful French houses. You gotta give it to me. French architecture is truly the most beautiful in the world, to my opinion. To my opinion. And over here, we got the front door of the house. As you can see, it's completely green on the outside. That is because it's completely overgrown. I think I can open this little window. Yeah. 
and now you can get a sense of how overgrown this place is. It's truly lost in time. Let's close it up again. And this piece of furniture here to the side was used, uh, the, you see it also a lot in old houses. Um, it's used to, uh, uh, this is a piece of furniture to go out of the house, so uh, I don't know the exact name of it, but you would hang your coat up here, your umbrellas would be down there, and uh, you would store general stuff that you need to go out of, out of the house with. You would store it on this piece of furniture, and it also had mirrors to check if you were clean in the morning before going out. And then we have one last room down here, and this is the dining room of the place. Wow. Give you a quick overview. Let's see what's in here as well. Oh, oh, a touring map of Israel. Look at that. Maybe this man sold, oh yeah, pottery is also really big in Israel. So maybe he had to do something with the country. Maybe he traded with the country or something like that. Or maybe it's just a piece of souvenir that he hanged in his house. This is an incredible piece of furniture. Beautiful cabinet. And it looks like there would be a clock face in here because there's a little window. It looks like there would be a clock in here, but it has been taken out. Wow. Lots of dishes in here. And lots More pottery in this cabinet. I like this boat that he made. You can assume that every single piece of pottery was uh, probably came from his factory inside of this place. He also did some plaster work. You can see these are faces from plaster work. Some trays. Oh. These are some heavy glasses. They have really thick glass on them. Close it up again. Then here to the side, we've got more built-in cabinets like we always see in France. Let's just open them up and see what's in there. More pottery, of course. <laughs> we open this one for you as well. We got another map here. This map is of France. And there's a newspaper above it. Interesting stuff. A lovely fireplace with the mirror above it here. And this is quite a unique stove to my opinion. Or is it a stove? I don't, get, don't think it's a stove. It's, it's made from wood. <laughs> a stove is normally not made from wood because it would burn. But I don't know what this piece of furniture is. So let me know again in the comment section if anybody has an idea what this was used for, maybe it was some sort of an animal cage or... But I'm not sure. On the dining table, he had more plaster work from his company. Wow. Oh, this is completely filled with What's that? What's, I don't know what it is filled with. Because all these little boxes, they look like cigar boxes. Let me just open one of them. Let's see what's in there. Oh. <laughs> what's that? Wow. This looks like supplies for sewing or something like it. Maybe his wife loved sewing and to use this cabinet to store her sewing supplies. Because you can see there are also these, all these little different pieces of cloth down here. So yeah, maybe she didn't take it with her when she left him behind. Let's close this up. Lovely to see. Completely filled with postcards and stuff like that. All this personal stuff in here. Lots of personal stuff left behind. 
don't know what this is. This is a, a little agenda, I think. This is a little agenda from 1956. There's nothing in there anymore, unfortunately. We got so much history from this place already. Designs for houses. And here to the side, we got a little stand. It's kind of covered with sewing supplies. So this adds on to the story that the wife probably had a passion for sewing and uh, making stuff that way. But we didn't see a sewing machine yet inside of this place. Maybe we'll find something upstairs, but uh, let's hope. This is a, a drawing from Mont Saint-Michel. It's actually not that far from here. Wow, Mont Saint-Michel is like an island nation in the ocean of France, uh, in the, in the can channel between France and England. And it's a pretty cool place. I've been there before. I even have a video of it and I will link it. I will link it uh, up there. Okay, now it's time to take a stroll upstairs and show you what's left behind over there. Oh, first off, here on the stairway, you can see the spider webs covering it. Isn't that just beautiful? How this place is lost in time. Coming here is an upstairs hallway. And the first thing we see, I think it's the toilet. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, a toilet, a sink to the side here, with a beautiful view of the garden. Wow. Let's close this again. Show you the hallway as well. And now we can enter into the first room. That is in front of you, completely, completely emptied out. Oh, this room has a sink inside of it. It's a beautiful old school French sink. Wow. Hot and cold, froid, chaud. Chaud is hot, froid is cold. Oh, this is a cool feature. Look, this little lever closes and opens the drain of the sink. Oh, do you see what I see? That seems like a little hidden door at the back here. Wow, look at it. It's completely disguised into the wall. Oh my God. <laughs> this is a hidden passageway that leads in the next, into the next bedroom. Wow, look at this. This is the upstairs bedroom. And then you have this passageway leading to the other room. So maybe the other room used to be a bureau or something like that, because why would you have a passageway to another bedroom and a bedroom? That seems crazy to me. <laughs> if, excuse me if I'm rambling, uh, rambling too much, but I'm just always curious going throughout these places, what it all used to have been. This seems to be another master bedroom, but the other one downstairs might have been used the most. A beautiful cabinet here to the side with some copper designs on it. Look at this. Looks amazing. A woman with a harp. Booklets in here and stuff like that. Then every single piece of furniture in this room has the same design on it. Same copper design on it, so it matches. The bed is also incredibly designed. We have the chest in front of here. Wow, these look like bullets in here. Empty bullets holsters. Let's go further here to the side. We have more built-in cabinets. Let's see what's in them. Ah, this used to be a closet as well. To store the clothes and to hide it away nicely. To make it seamless with the room is a nice word, I think. Another fireplace inside of this bedroom. Wow. Look at the design on top. That's magnificent. Little table in here as well. Got some paintings. 
Oh, I just noticed something here on the table. This looks like an old school shaver. Wow. Look at this device. I'm going to show you how it works. <laughs> so I have a beard and uh, they would use this old school device to shave themselves. And uh, they would do like this. They would spray, first spray their face wet. And then I would shave like this. Very easy, actually. And it's very durable. These devices, they last a lifetime, as you can see. It's still here. Wow. And this looks like another secret passageway that leads us into the next room. And that's the bathroom. Oh, and here we already see decay happening inside of this place. I hear the floor already cracking underneath my feet, so I should be a bit careful inside of this room because this is the most deteriorated room inside of this place. It's actually a very small bathroom. Maybe there to the side here as well. Very typical for friends, of course. They also got this system of closing the sinks. See if there's anything left in here. Nothing. Okay. It's time to move on to the next room. Okay, let's see what this one beholds. Another bedroom. Oh yeah. Let's have a look. This one is also quite fancy in my opinion. The first thing that I notice inside of this room is this, I think it's a walking cane. Looks like a very typical French walking cane. This is completely handmade. You can see the letter on there. Wow, what a beautiful piece. Every single bed in this place has no mattress inside of it anymore. That's very strange to me. Why would they take out all the mattresses of this place? That's something I would leave behind, but they took it with them. Look at this Egyptian chair, I always call it, I'm not sure. It looks like they had some dogs inside of this place because it's completely covered with hairs. Then we got another stand for a vase and a nightstand next to it. What's this on here? It's like some sort of a metal device. Wow. The people in here also used to love to make paintings. I don't know which uh, person, the man or the woman, who did it. I, I'm not sure. Not a beautiful nightstand next to here. Wow. Fireplace without a mirror. <laughs> Some tables to the side. This looks like some box to store a file in or something like it. Or some sort of a music device. But it has nothing in there anymore. That squeaking noise. Oh. What are these? Are these glasses or something? It's a whole box of glasses. I don't know what this device used to be. <laughs> There's so many things inside of this place where I have no clue what they were used for. Just because I'm not old enough. <laughs> that squeaking sound. <laughs> hmm. Look at this. Beautiful. Okay, now it's time to go to the attic. One of my favorite places of the house. Okay, let's open this up. Beautiful door again, leading up to the attic. And let's see what's left behind. Because I always tell you, attics are the places where people store memories of former times. We already can see a back laying down here. I've not been on this attic yet. It's a very typical French attic, as you can see. Maybe we're gonna find some more stuff of the wife up here. Wow. You immediately see a picture of uh, Lourdes. That's, uh, I think this is Lourdes, yes. As a holy site in France. I don't see that much up here. I hope to see some pottery or to see some stewing stuff of the wife. 
But we got some sort of a device here. Looks like an electrical device. Huh. Also quite interesting. This attic is completely filled with spider webs. They are everywhere and when I walk they all go into my face and it's not, <laughs> not nice, <laughs> as I should say. But I hope to find some pottery up here. Here we got a little more sewing stuff left behind. Wow. Mm, there's a pot down there. First sign. Interesting stuff up here. This is how you would expect an attic to be. In an abandoned place. Oh, there's lots of books stored up here. Let's see what kind of books they, they read. Petite history, the small history of France. Course de musical vocal, musical book. Interesting. And we got also like a child's book up here. Oh no, she say two. It's enough. Wow. Look at this. And then in here, got another little storage area. Also completely covered with spider webs. Let's see what we have in here. Oh, these are some clothes from the wife. They're still up here. Wow. They're held in these, in these bags. And they, it looks like some black clothes or something like that. Wow. It's beautiful. This is a newspaper from 1919. <laughs> See, they did advertisements for cars that we now call old timers. Wow. Old school drill down here. Yeah, this place truly was a time capsule. Wow. Don't know what this device is. It looks also pretty interesting. Okay, it's time to go outside again and show you that backyard that I've been talking about. Yes. Ah, let me see. I think this person that lived here was quite rich and he might also used to have some servants on something like it. No, that's not true. This is not a big castle. It's not like a multi-million dollar castle. It's just a manoir. But I talked about the houses of it. I promised you guys to show you these houses that are on the property as well. I think these used to be family houses for uh, to get uh, family over or something like that. Let me see. Oh, this might have been a kitchen. Yeah. Look at the sink over here and everything. Oh, this might have been the washing room, the old school washing room. This might have been a scrubber or something like that. Lovely to see. There's even an upstairs here, where I definitely gotta take a look. It looks like an old school attic, but it holds nothing. No, whoa, the floor has completely collapsed over here. <laughs> Better go down right now. As you can see, the front yard is completely overgrown. You can barely see the place anymore. Wow. There's one last thing I want to show you in this place. And that's the basement over here. And I think it used to be a wine cellar. So I'm quite excited to see it. Ooh, look at this. Again, lots of spider webs taking over this place. In these basements, it's always pretty cool. Outside it's like 30 degrees and inside here, it's very cool. That's why they stored wine in here, of course. There would be lots and lots of thousands and thousands of wine bottles stored in this basement because this man was pretty rich. And here we can see some of those wine bottles. And I think, oh no, they are, most are empty, I see. Unfortunately, most are empty. Yeah. Wow. 
And then we got these big wine jugs over here. These probably hold like a hundred liters of wine. Wow. It looks like he might have also produced little quantities of wine himself. Because that's, this are, these are a lot of wine bottles to just have for yourself. <laughs> then you would be an alcoholic or something. Wow. And some more rooms over here. But uh, these are just general heating and storage rooms. And the gas tank, of course. Wow, what a fantastic place that we just explored. There was literally no technology in this place except for the telephone and the light switches. How incredible is that? If you like places like this, please give the video a like. Comment down there what you thought about it. And there's also a link in the description for Patreon. There you can support the channel. We are just students and it's very hard for us explore, to explore these places because in Europe, everything is very expensive, traveling and stuff like that. But we do it and we love to do it. And we want to thank you, the people who support us and the people who support us in the future. So with that all being said, thank you very much for watching this week's video. And like always, I see you in the next one. Love you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>